After the untimely death of Tadamori Taira in 1153, his son Kiyomori became head of the Taira clan and ambitiously entered the realm of politics. Three years later, the Hogan Rebellion would erupt, throwing the imperial court into chaos. Call them robbers and cutthroats. Were they not amiable enough when they had sufficient food to fill their bellies? Something was out of joint in a world that drove these men to steal. With the help of Kiyomori and the Minamoto clan, the court was able to suppress the revolt, placing the Taira and the Minamoto as the head clans of Kyoto. However, this sparked a bitter rivalry between the two clans, which led to the Heiji Rebellion in 1159. Should misfortune visit the court, that can only be the result of its continued abuses. If the palace is attacked, I can hardly be held responsible for the outcome. Ultimately, Kiyomori was victorious in annihilating the Minamoto, placing the Taira as the top samurai clan in Japan. I can only bow to the will of heaven, but not to the will of these men. Kiyomori then began securing his elite status by marrying his sister and daughters off to several key officials in the court and the Fujiwara clan, which made the Taira clan the supreme power under imperial rule, making Kiyomori the de facto administrator of the government. Dumb creatures that you are, how magnificent! Sorrow, love, Parental love incarnate. Even the beast can rise above itself. Could I as much? A series of revolts would then occur in 1177, and Kiyomori would suppress and cruelly execute the conspirators. You pitiful, pitiful creatures. Armor did not make a man, nor did it signify valor. He did everything he could to keep those he deemed weak under his oppressive control. However, there were spiritual signs of the Tyra's inevitable decline. Let's not quibble longer, lest this rare opportunity slip through my fingers. In 1180, the once thought annihilated Minamoto clan made a return and began an anti Tyra campaign against the capital. Although the Tyra could initially hold them off, they were ultimately overwhelmed due to the Tyra clan being out of practice for many years. Die? Then so be it. I hear thousands of voices of the people urging me to go forward and do what must be done. During the latter end of the Gunpei War, Kiyomori fell ill and died leaving his family to be slaughtered by the Minamoto Uprising. In Warriors Orochi, Kiyomori was resurrected by Daji as a demonic entity, hell-bent on reviving Orochi at any cost. <laughs> Although he is loyal and devout retainer, Orochi shows utter disdain for him. Kiyomori's design is based off of the Onyudo, or giant priest yokai. The Onyudo are types of yokai that commonly appear as tall human monks that wield giant Buddhist beads. You see, Kiyomori was a very religious man, and commissioned to construct many Buddhist temples in the capital. Whether he was the son of an emperor, or the child of an intrigue, he was a child of the heavens and the earth. His weapons, the prayer beads, are named after the various stages of his rule. The malevolence, subterfuge, inequity, and tyranny are also named after his sons in the Asian ports, youngest to oldest. Have you no more sense than toads and vipers? Our time hasn't come. Have you no patience? Time is not yet here for us to raise our heads. Now this very sinister interpretation of Kiyomori is a byproduct of propaganda, slandering him and the Tyra's name to make him appear as though he was actually a demon, but in actuality, he was just a politician. 
a very, very, very corrupt politician whose cruelty outweighed the antics of his ancestors, making him the Tyra's best and last display of their strength and influence. Oh, my God.